Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the loop step and also the container operation step. So we are going to discuss about these two steps. So without wasting time, let's get started. So I'm going to double click on the undefined step and then I'm going to choose the loop step. All right. In the loop step name, I'm going to provide a name for the step. I'll say loop step. And here you can see we have to mention a condition. All right. So for this condition, I'm, I need to create a container element. So for that, I'll go back and create a container element. I'll give the name as counter. And I will provide the type as num1. Yes. So now I go back to the loop step and then I click on the new condition and here I'll provide the expression. So the expression is going to be the counter and in the operator I'm going to give equals and I'm going to provide a value here, a constant. All right. Enter. Click on the tick mark. So, so basically what, what, what means is that the loop is going to continue. The loop is going to continue till this condition is satisfied. All right. So the loop is going to continue the loop. This loop is similar to the loop, st uh, the loop statement, what you have in your ABAP program. So it's kind of, uh, it is going to continue. Okay. Till a condition is met here, it is going to continue. All right. So for that, I will also mention the counter as importing okay, because I'm going to provide a value to this, this, this element, right. And also, I'm going to provide an initial value as one. So the counter will begin with one. Okay. So the, f the first loop pass, the value of counter is one. So it becomes one equal to five. So the condition is not satisfied until it re reaches five. The condition is not going to get satisfied. So that means it goes to the new loop pass. If the condition is not met. Okay. I'll say the branch as new loop. And I'll say here as loop end. So once the condition is satisfied, if the counter becomes value of five, then the loop will end. Otherwise, the loop is going to have a new loop pass. It'll con keep continuing, right? So in order to make things more clear for you, I'm also going to show you how the container operation works. All right. So the, now the counter value is one, the initial value I have given as one. So, and then I'm going to um, do a counter operation and that will get incremented. The counter value is going to get incremented. All right. So here I'm also going to create a, a new step, which is the user decision step. Okay. So here I'm going to say, I'm giving, going to give the uh, title as loop. And I'll provide ampersand one. So ampersand one means at runtime, the value, whatever is there in parameter one, that is going to get filled in ampersand one. All right. So I'm going to choose counter. So the counter at runtime, it is going to get, it, it, it is going to replace this ampersand one. All right. And now I'll provide an outcome as approve branch. So the outcome will be approved. Okay, you can create keep uh, your own text, but here I'm going to create as approve. So this is a user decision step in which there will be an agent who is going to act on this um, step. Okay, there needs to be a person who is going to take action on this uh, step. So I will provide it as workflow initiator. So that is myself who is initiated the workflow. All right. So I, I hope this is clear for you. This is just. Um, like the counter value is going to get replaced in every loop pass. So every loop pass, this value is going to get incremented. Okay. The counter value will increment and then it will get stored here. All right. So for that, for this to happen, I'm also going to create a container operation. So I'm going to double click here after the user decision step, I'll say counter increment here. I'll say something like increment. And then the result element has to be uh, the counter itself. Why? Because uh, we are going to 
um, add value to this uh, counter, right? So this is going to get incremented. So the result element is going to be counter itself and the expression, I'm going to choose counter itself. All right. So I'm going to basically this means that I'm going to add one with the counter. So the value of one is going to get added to counter and it will get stored in counter itself. All right. I'll put a tick mark here. So now basically the workflow is going to get started and then the user decision step is executed. Okay. So I, I being the agent, I'm going to take an action on this. All right. So I, once I approve, it goes to the approved branch. Why only approved is there? Because I'm not, I've just created one, one branch or one outcome for this. Okay. If you want, you can uh, create a rejected branch also, but for the time being, I've not done that. So I've just one outcome here. All right. And then this value, the counter value they are in the ampersand one, it is going to get incremented by one in every loop pass. So it is going to get uh, continued unless if the condition is satisfied, it is going to end the loop. All right. So I'll save this workflow. I'll say, okay. I'm going to give a name and abbreviation for this and click on the tick mark, local object. And then I'm going to execute this workflow. I'll, I'll activate it first. And then I'm going to execute it. So because I have already provided the counter initial value as one, it's, it's taking that. If you want to change it, you can change it here. But I don't want that because I just want to see how, how, how the execution is working for this loop. So uh, I'm going to execute this. So as you can see here, um, the loop, uh, the user decision step got executed and it, it becomes the counter value is one now because this is the initial, the first step is the user decision step, right? Right. So it, it becomes loop one because the counter initial value is one. So once I approve this, it again goes to, it increments the counter and then again, it comes back to the user decision step. So now I have the value of um, amp, amp, uh, amp, uh, ampersand one as two, right? And now again, I approve it. Now loop three, approve, loop four, approve, it ends the workflow. So you can see the workflow work item is got completed. Workflow is completed. All right. So this is how uh, this is works. So you can see here, there are four loops. Okay. In the fifth, in the fifth loop, the condition gets satisfied. All right. For the loop, the condition is, it should be equal to five. So only then the loop will end. So in this case, after the fourth loop, the condition is satisfied and it ends the loop right so you can see here this is the path the um the wor workflow has taken okay first workflow starts user decision loop one approved i'm approving it um uh, in the in in the from the screen and then the the inc uh, it, it gets incremented all right the increment step we have created counter operation step we have created so the, it gets incremented by one the counter element is incremented by one, then it goes for the new new loop and then it gets repeated until the condition is satisfied. Once the condition is satisfied, the loop ends. All right. So that's it basically for today. Um, and please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. All right. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.